late nightmare of Jimmy Fallon or more Pat CC. Now, is it just like a trope where every single night show host is just a terrible person? Like, is there a single good night show host? Can y'all name? Do any of y'all watch any night show hosts? Or what are they called? Late talk, late talk night? Ugh, damn it. Nah, no. Jay Leno. I know him from before, like in the past, but I think he has some bad things on him too. Jimmy Fallon, SNL, Trevor Noah, Conan is a W. Oh yeah, I heard Conan is cool. I heard Conan is cool. But yeah, I did hear there were some crazy allegations that came out on Jimmy Fallon. Uh, it might be GG's for him. So let's go. There's an undeniable sincerity that emanates from Jimmy Fallon. He's not just a talk show host. He's a friend you've known for years, inviting you into his world with open mid. arms. Since his late night debut in 2009, Jimmy has almost unanimously been loved Wait, by- Wait, I, I swear, I thought, he was, I thought he was doing this since like 2000. Fans and celebrities, but not anymore. The people closest to Jimmy, the ones he relies on the most, have come forward to Watch reveal that, that his actual character behind the scenes is the total opposite of lovable and genuine. Wow. Erratic behavior, outbursts, intimidation, avoid eye contact. Nobody told Jimmy no. These quotes don't sound like the- I mean, it sounds like nothing wrong. It's pretty much how I rule my Twitch chats. I mean stop apologetically joyful Ellen tonight show host we know but these revelations might not be shocking to some as mm. many people have speculated jimmy's nice guy persona is entirely fake more specifically his fake laugh <laughs> you can't say it. You can't say it. <laughs> uh, <Jimmy. laughs> i mean okay okay yeah that is fake as f but at the same time a lot of people be having to do like Imagine you're doing entertainment 24 seven and you have to sit there with a random person and like, cause people just like the human brain connects with laughter, right? They see somebody in a positive state and laughing. So like, I feel like a lot of entertainers do that, bro. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. Like even me, I just did it there. You didn't even notice too. You didn't hear it. Rewind the clip. <laughs> you didn't even notice. I just did it. I just did it. No, but genuinely like, I don't think I've ever had to fake it like crazy. I just be happy as f like, I, I love reading the chat, bro. Like, y'all are really my friends. That's why. So I'll be smiling when I read the chat. And I guess some people could be like, oh, that's that seems fake. But actually, I actually like reading the chat. We're finally one insane. <laughs> Jimmy will laugh at just about it. Bro, he sounds like a dolphin. how it sounded like on his joker arc jimmy room. will laugh at just about everything to the point where he Don't sounds like a, a programmed funeral? laugh track being controlled by a producer backstage mm. if you think about embarrassment scale of one to ten okay. one is just like being a person walking down the street mm -hmm. and ten is for me uh co-hosting the oscars with james franco <laughs> <laughs> without okay okay dude okay dude okay <laughs> okay relax That, was, that, that wasn't even a joke. What's so funny? I, I don't know. Letting Ann mention why this was embarrassing, Jimmy just bursts out into laughter when there was nothing funny about Imagine what she said. Pops up and yeah. then he, adds and then he tries noise. to connect my, uh, my, my right foot to my left arm. <laughs> and he's, he's trying to connect them like this. And I'm in such pain, I go uh, like that. Yeah. And, it, and, his, and his belly goes in my mouth. <laughs> What is that? What is that? <laughs> Even Ryan Gosling looked at Jimmy. Oh, I said Ryan, Ryan Gosling. My bad. Used as to why he was laughing so hard. The they both juice. play it off awkwardly because they quickly realize this is harmless and it only makes them look better or funnier. There's no point in calling him out, but Taylor Swift wasn't having it. Uh, the VMAs are coming up August 24th, and they're saying I heard that Taylor Swift will be performing. Can you confirm or deny? Um. I mean, we've had a really good time today. Taylor! So, Taylor! Uh, see where I'm going? Oh my god, calm down! Bro, why did he just go up like eight octaves? He's like, Taylor! 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 Answer the f***ing question! Answer the question, bitch! We need to know! I'm like, damn, bro, calm, chill. What the hell was that?
playing with this. We've had a really I need to rewind that. Today. Taylor. So Taylor. 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 See where I'm going with this? At least nobody ever listens to me. Oh they my god. Oh my god. So what I was saying is You're not even that looking at me. Because I'm because I'm trying to think of what to say next. <laughs> If he isn't interrupting them with no, laughs. No, I hate those type of people. Oh my god, yapping. I hate those type of people. Oh my god. Y'all ever had, bro, y'all ever got in trouble as like a kid, right? As a kid? And then your parents are like, look look me in the eye or something? Like, obviously I don't want to look you in the eye because I'm pissed off now. I don't want to be looking at you in the eyes. They used to piss me off so much when I was younger. After he is interrupting them bro, with other pointless the talking, mean? Taylor Swift's frustration was a little more obvious than David Spade's. Carson wasn't even the first one, but I squeaked yeah. on. You did stand up. When I did, uh, I'll tell the story. When I... Wait, what just happened? I looked at chat for a second and I see him. <laughs> I look at chat for a second. Damn, bro. Is this what it takes to be a late night show host? That's the case where I'm gonna stick with streaming and, and, and YouTube. When I did, uh, I'll tell the story. When I... <laughs> David just gave him a... How is that funny? I'm so confused. A little jab and laughing, Jimmy knew guys? he was wrong for interrupting the comedian. So he tried to make Dave look like the bad guy and walk off. This wasn't the first time Jimmy walked it's off. It's all staged and there's nothing really wrong with that. That's a lot of late night shows. Like you have a ba basic things you have to follow. Like basic things you have to follow, but just overdoing it seems very fake. Set to avoid an awkward situation Bro, that he caused. Fruit? No, it's about uh, how uh, you can beat a human well, being down to. Don't tell anyone. It's okay. Let them just uh, just see the movie, yeah, or yeah, not, or not. Yeah. You know what the movie's about, kind of, right? Yeah. So you don't need me. No. You don't need me. No, no. Do it. no you don't need me. No, 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 no one needs me. It's fine. Okay. Let's go. No, come back. Come back. Come on, man. This is a safe way to play off his awkward interruptions because no host would ever walk off their own show for a tiny error. Often mm. it seems like Jimmy has nothing substantial to add to the conversation but feels the need to interrupt or explode with laughter. The internet- And to be fair, like, can we really get mad at him? Cause like, that's every- that's late night talk show and just talk show host job. Most of the time, like, Ellen, for example, wouldn't be a celebrity if she didn't have other celebrities. I guess, like, I, I think it's his job. I can't really say anything about that, but I don't know. It, it can get annoying. That has memed Jimmy's antics into oblivion. While some say he has a huge ego and wants more spotlight for himself, it seems like he does this to maintain control. He fears dead air, a boring story, or an unfunny joke. So he jabs his way into the conversations with- So he was like kind of- he was kind of more on the attention span, like, like before it became a thing, like keeping people's attention and keeping them always on a dopamine high. That was him. That was him. He started it. Quick jokes or laughs in an attempt to make sure the audience is engaged, but then it ends up doing the opposite. I mean, every time a guest is talking, he leans in, stares at them intensely, maybe reaches his arm out and is waiting for mm -hmm. a for a split second to interrupt to make sure you are entertained. The other thing that agitates people is how he showers every single guest with compliments. I Carly, I need somebody to tell me wh who that celebrity is. I just need to know for personal reasons. You're my favorite, we love you. It's my favorite movie, my favorite album. As if celebrities mm. need any more ego stroking. Jimmy's defenders think all this controversy is ridiculous. John Cena, bro, not the guy. Bro, this lady. Airs at them intensely. Intensely, maybe reaches his arm out and is waiting for a split second to interrupt to make sure you are entertained. The other thing that agitates people is how he showers every single guest with compliments. You're my favorite. We love you. It's my favorite movie, my favorite album. As if celebrities need any more ego He's stroking. Blazing. Jimmy's defenders think all this controversy is ridiculous. Should he not laugh? Just sit there and be awkward? His show is supposed mm. to be fun. He just wants his guests to be relaxed and confident in front of a live audience. This can definitely explain his overreactions to guests winning his mini games sounds like a poodle yeah. a leopard turtle yeah, okay. now it seems ridiculous to nitpick this from jimmy i don't think that was too bad I because don't know. fake reactions have been a crucial part of tv and youtube it's a bit forever. too much david dobrik ksi and joe rogan have been okay yeah if a youtuber did that or something like imagine imagine i'm doing <laughs> imagine i do the same thing and then somebody answered the, like, I asked somebody in my Discord or something to answer and they got it. And I was like. But like, that would be annoying, okay? That, that would actually be annoying. I don't know, because it's, 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 it's TV. It's TV. TV is NPC, okay? TV is NPC. Like, it's not on the same wavelengths. On the same wavelengths. 
Like, even now, bro, y'all that watch this shit from other kids or something, they might be like, well, how do you watch that nigga that does commentary, this and that? Why are you watching a streamer, this and that? But it's like NPC-filled content. Like, any NPC is gonna think that's funny. Like, ha ha, look at the way Jimmy dances. That's what they think. ...contributors to the fake laughter, fake reaction laugh epidemic. laugh isn't even serious at all. Okay. Ah. And if you think there is... It's very like... Ah. I know everything. Nah. I kind of do agree with a lot of what he says. What's Jimmy is a people pleaser and just wants to make everyone comfortable. Bless his heart. That laugh does the opposite to me. It feels like he's hiding something. And Jimmy may be hiding something. A lifetime of alcoholism. And the reason he began drinking may shock you. But first, a word from our sponsor, Underdog. Underdog, so sign up with code PatrickCC today to take advantage and win some money. As a teenager, Jimmy was obsessed with Saturday Night Live. The program had been running for nearly two decades, and Jimmy was fully immersed, insisting on watching the program alone in pure silence because he hated unnecessary commentary from others. Although he could only see the clean parts his parents take. Oh my god, is this how he look like as a teenager? Bro, my question is, why did, like, did he look, he looks older, I would say. He looks like he's in his 20s or something. Minecraft Steve? Uh, for him, Jimmy didn't miss a single sketch or punchline. But there's some older, like, have y'all ever seen, have y'all ever seen how teens look like from the 60s and stuff? And it's like, how the hell, do, how the hell did a 20 year old, like, dude from the 60s look like he was 50 already? How was it even possible? It must have been, like, either the food, either the food we're getting is toxic or the food they got was toxic. Because, like, well, something's not matching up. Something's not matching up. I know a lot of times they say we look too young. Like, we're supposed to look older, especially as guys, because testosterone and this and that, but. Could be anything. Stress and smoking? Actually, yeah, that adds on to it. That adds on to it. Remain devoted to learning as much as possible. Ironically, the his Mercury. parents didn't want him watching adult humor sketches, but they would let him drink alcohol while watching. As long as I wasn't mm. doing anything at night, I'd just sit by myself and I would have a six pack of Pabst. I don't know if I made it all the way through the six, but I'd just sit there and watch the show and tape it. He and his sister Gloria reenacted sketches with friends before Jimmy discovered a talent for impressions, often impersonating actor James Cagney and comedian Dana Carter. Harvey. I was one of those kids who, if I hung around another kid for an hour, I was that kid. Fallon said, It was weird. I'd come home and I'd do his type of humor, his type of mannerisms. Okay, no, no, to be fair, this is hella people, bro. This is hella people. Like, how many of y'all <laughs> have walked out of a f movie and wanted to be that character? Hella people be doing this. And my mom would say, Okay, Joey, you want dinner Tension now? Because I'd be like, lie, after watching Oppenheimer, bro, I was like, Damn, I'm ready to blow up a country. You know what? Let me stop, bro. Let me stop. Oppenheimer was a good movie, though. Acting like Joey Gonzalez. From a young age, Jimmy was an imitator, instinctively copying and mimicking things that he thought were funny instead of having the drive to produce his own material, which hmm. was an early sign of being the perfect late night television host. Through hours of meticulously studying various comedy and musical routines, Fallon continued working on his craft and established established himself as a performer at Saugerties High School, appearing wow. in most stage productions. It was a rush. I think it was the rush of getting a reaction. Maybe it's acceptance. Maybe it's a thing where you're pleasing somebody. I want to be friends with everybody. And if you make a joke and everyone laughs, you're like, that's it. I scored. Oh, uh, so he was what I was, I, I would talk to that. I talked about that before when we watched that video about the dude that peaked in high school. But there's always a kid that likes to suck up to the popular kids and likes to get their attention. He was one of those. He was the theater kid. I think I think he, a theater kid or uh, a suck up to the popular kids. One of those. That's what I thought making a friend was. You just feel like people like you. With so maybe it was that acceptance. It seems like Jimmy's people pleaser mentality has been in full effect since his youth. His obsession with Saturday Night Live carried on throughout his time at St. Rose College in New York, skipping parties and events so that he could watch SNL as it aired. Fallon lived for the weekends when he would regularly board buses from his aunt's house in Fort Hamilton to perform stand-up comedy sets at Caroline's on Broadway and Times Square. On stage is where Jimmy felt most at home, and his urge to make audiences laugh couldn't be ignored as he dropped out of college in 1995. Bro, y'all know what's funny? You know what's crazy, bro? My mom literally came up to me and, like, this was pretty recent, right? This was around this month. She showed one of her co-workers my video. I don't know why. And she was like, the dude said I should be a stand-up comedian. Can you imagine me being on a f like, this just reminded me of that. Can you imagine me being on stage like this trying to make jokes? Uh, but I, I understand what he was trying to say because he told me she was trying to like y'all gotta understand he's older He's part of the older generation, right? Like this shit is new, bro He YouTube was made when he was like 50 probably worst one yet Tom would get tomatoes thrown at him. I would I would be up there like uh, so uh, uh The airplane food right or how does the line go or some shit? I, I don't even remember. See I'm already failing. I'm already failing
home, and his urge to make audiences laugh couldn't be ignored as he dropped out of edits of your videos is what makes it funny. Yeah, I couldn't sit there and be trying to imagine me trying to add a goofy sound effect in real life or something. You the next Dave Chappelle? Oh, hell nah. College in 1995 to move to Los Angeles, California to pursue comedy full time. I'm he actually getting a manager tomato who got in, him in very minor roles in comedy films like Father's Day and television sitcoms like Spin City. But it didn't matter because his mm. dream wasn't to become an actor. I thought it was called Sin City. Jimmy remained fixated on joining Saturday Night Live. After two years of working on his sketch comedy and improv skills with the Groundlings, wow. he took a leap of faith and auditioned for SNL, but bombed. This career setback could have killed his dreams as a comedian altogether, but his obsession with SNL wouldn't let him give up. When he landed a small role on a Warner Brothers sitcom, Fallon negotiated a clause in his contract that would release him if he got on SNL. The producers agreed only because they thought it would never happen. This was my ultimate goal. If I ever cut into a birthday cake and made a wish, I would wish to be on SNL. If I threw a coin into a fountain, I would wish to be on SNL. If I saw a shooting star, I would wish to be on SNL. Wow. It's crazy. I had no other plan. I didn't have friends. I didn't have a girlfriend. I didn't have anything going on. I had my career. That was it. S you know what? You were a loser. I can't lie. He was a loser. <sighs> Let me stop. You know what? That's a good grind, actually. Lonely ass mother SNL dick muncher. Guys, come on. This is a positive come up story. Like some of y'all could really take take bits and pieces and apply this to your own life. SNL is notorious for its difficult audition stage. The series creator, Lauren Michaels, almost never laughed during auditions, and it would mm. take a special talent to grab his attention. Fallon recalls three different people warning him about Lauren's lack of laughter, but he learned a lot from his first catastrophic performance, and his second audition, he would come prepared with nothing but himself and his impressions, something that he perfected over time. Jimmy marched on that stage, performing a celebrity walkathon with impressions of Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, Bill Cosby, and Adam Sandler. To his surprise, Michaels and other executives could not stop laughing. I was in the room mm. that day, says former Only SNL writer Tina SNL. Fey. He's one of two people I've ever seen who was completely ready to be on the show. Kristen Wiig is the other one. And Jimmy was ready like if there had been a show to do that night. Lauren Michaels informed Jimmy that his dreams were now a reality. He was going to be a cast member of Saturday Night Live. All Jimmy could do was look at Michaels and tell him, I'm going to make you proud. He debuted beside the cast of SNL as a featured player during its 24th season. Oh, is that Jimmy? Yo, Jimmy got a little bit of sass to him. A, li a, li a little bit, a little bit. A little bit of sass. In September 1998, Fallon established himself as a household name overnight, now. becoming known for his spot-on impressions of various celebrities and public figures. While mm. he was living out his dream, Jimmy it's was giving. also <laughs> developing a scary addiction that would come back to haunt him decades later. During their time at SNL, Fallon and cast member Horatio Sands often drank together. Sands has described himself and Fallon as super-functioning alcoholics and stated, that kind of goes hand-in-hand -hand with SNL, some kind of substance abuse issues because it's so stressful you could easily find yourself blowing off steam a lot. Sands recounted how he and Fallon got in a couple of brawls. I've seen Jimmy clock a few people, he said. Jimmy could fight. I don't know where he learned, but he definitely scrapped with the best of them. Damn. Jimmy working in a high-stress environment and abusing his health to cope is potential he was foreshadowing really in the for the work environment he, was really he would in the create on his own show. He always planned to leave Saturday Night Live after three seasons. However, Lorne Michaels offered him a role on Weekend Update with Tina Fey, which is essentially mm. the comedic news section that SNL covers every week. Unfortunately, Jimmy also developed a negative reputation on hands? SNL as somebody who can't hold in his laughter. At first, it was an innocent mistake that began in the famous More Cowbell sketch. When oh my god, I forgot Seth Rogen got- Bro, there's so many famous actors that got big from SNL. Will Ferrell wore a tight shirt- I know they're pissed that they, they, they should have signed him to like 360 contracts or something. ...that caused Fallon to break character. Every cast member was laughing during this skit because, well, it was Jimmy's hilarious, but that moment opened a revolving door of cast members intentionally trying to get Jimmy to break character, and he did break character, a lot, interrupting the punchlines and comedic timing by laughing and giggling. While some thought it was hilarious, others found it insensitive and believed he was attempting to steal their spotlight and make the sketches about himself. Lauren didn't mm. like it. The writers didn't like Wait, it. Wait, is Saturday Night Live, like, this might be a stupid question. Is Saturday Night Live actually live? Like, the actors are sitting there live? It's not, right? It's pre-recorded, right? The hour and a half long comedy show which broadcasts live from Studio 8H and 30 Rockville has become such a- So why didn't they just remove the laughter? That just sounds stupid. I'm not trying to do it on definitely. purpose. I'm trying not to do it. But sometimes it just got insane. 
I couldn't hold it in. It was just so much fun. SNL has always tried to maintain the best of the best when it comes to comedic talent. Comedians laughing at their own jokes can sometimes be seen as unprofessional. In 2004, Jimmy decided to leave SNL and move into traditional acting. He signed a two-movie deal with 20th Century Fox with the hopes of becoming a prominent star in the industry. The first was a lead role in the 2004 action comedy Taxi, alongside then-rapper turned actor Queen Latifah. The other was the 2005 romantic comedy Fever it. Pitch alongside Drew Cannot Barrymore. Act. Both films received mixed reviews and had decent box office performance, but were not the first impression Jimmy Fallon wanted. With back-to-back -back disappointments, film offers rapidly decreased as studio executives grew hesitant to feature Fallon in future projects. He experienced what he has deemed a lost period, characterized mm. by a larger-than-usual alcohol consumption and uncertainty about his future career choices. I was probably drinking more than I should have been drinking, he confessed. It wasn't like like sitting and watching old tapes of me on SNL with the screen flickering in front of me, I was like, I can't figure out what I want to do. Fortunately for Fallon, the man who gave him his dream job at SNL was about to save him once again, as the host of Late Night had an opening in 2009 after Conan O'Brien was transitioning to The Tonight Show. But Jimmy didn't make the best first impression. Many quickly realized that Jimmy was- My main question is, how do they get big? How do they get- Okay, Jimmy, he got big off of SNL. That's how he got his own show. How did Conan get big? How do most of these niggas get big? Is it just SNL? <laughs> Jimmy took watching his away his sins too literally. It's where they debut, I guess. G are dark enough for late night comedy. GQ claimed Jimmy was too cute That's for late cute. night audiences, used to hanging out with the snarky cool Kick crowd, streams? suggesting he was too corny. What are you about? Yeah, the cool crowd was always too corny. Damn, Damn. they was roasting the shit. Hold cool up, crowd, suggesting he was too corny. Damn, they were roasting the shit. <laughs> Yeah, the cool crowd was always beyond my grasp, he admitted. Late Night with Jimmy Fallon premiered on NBC in early Get it March called corny? Like, I think getting called corny is probably the worst. Like, you could literally throw any insult. Just call me pure corny. Like, the corn corniest of corny cor corn cobs. I'm just gonna have to end it. Series immediately outperformed CBS's The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson by mm. half a million viewers. Fallon also garnered more viewers than his predecessor, Cornelius Conan O'Brien. Late Night with Jimmy Fallon was one of the first late night talk shows to embrace social media and use it as an integral part of the show's engagement with its audience. Jimmy was able to connect with the youth who weren't watching TV at midnight in 2012 by regular uploads to YouTube, particularly comedic sketches and challenges with their favorite celebrities. I got these tickets. Uh to the One Direction concert. Ew, I love One Direction. Do you have an extra ticket? Yeah. Okay, is this what he was doing on his show? <laughs> what is this? I've never seen this. Many of these videos amassed millions of views, but it was nothing compared to the dominance he would have on The Tonight Show. In early 2014, Jimmy Fallon transitioned to NBC's The what Tonight Show, at, where he dog? had big shoes to fill. From Steve Allen to Jack Parr, to the iconic Johnny Carson who stamped the show's legacy for 30 years, then Jay Leno and Conan O'Brien, it was now Jimmy's job to lead the most popular late night show of all time. He debuted mm. to a staggering 11.3 million viewers, and despite all the alleged fake laughs overreactions, interruptions, and being too corny, he dominated late night television. The show averaged 3 to 4 million live concurrent viewers throughout the years, but also embraced social media with their YouTube channel that has amassed 30 million subscribers. Dude, if you really think like the TV era, I think the TV era is just never gonna cut, touch, touch the like social media era, because it was really getting like 3 or 4 million viewers. It's like, it's like if I was doing a stream right now, and there was like 4 million people in this shit. Really think of it, like just 4 million people just watching every week, every week. And I'm always thinking, what if they added chats back then? The chats would be crazy. Like I really, oh my God, I wish we could rewind time and like add chats <laughs> in certain like points in history. Like, like when the, like when the, I want to say when the queen died. Nah, something older, like something crazy older or something. <laughs> With multiple videos and the hundreds People of millions of views, a lot of Jimmy's segments mimic the format of YouTube challenges. Many mm -hmm. of you have never even watched Late Night, but have seen tons of The Tonight Show's YouTube some clips, segments, yeah. such as Lip Sync Battle, Musical Impressions, and Egg Russian Roulette, where he and his guests would engage in playful competitions resulting in funny and often viral moments. His comedic sketches and style often mimicked SNL because of his obsession and Lord Michael's production. Jimmy is like the personification of a golden retriever, and America loved him.
And although the late night host is a high profile and often rewarding role, the pressure can be severe. Late night hosts are expected to be funny and entertaining every night. The constant pressure to deliver humor can be mentally and emotionally taxing. Late night hosts must stay up to date with current events and pop culture trends to keep- You them actually understand this bro, because I'm basically, with, the, with streaming, I'm on the same level. I'm on the same level as Jimmy Fallon. I have to sit there, sit here, bro. I always have to say something when I'm doing react. I can't just sit here and chill and just lay back and watch the video and eat some food. Well, some streamers actually do that shit, but not me, y'all. Not me, okay? I look at my chat. I'm talking. I look at the video. I add something. I'm basically on the same level as Jimmy, so I can understand his pain. I can understand his pain. Late night show starring Tommy Energy. <laughs> material relevant Welcome, which energy. requires continuous research and adaptability the aspect of uh, is that the wii u relevant which requires oh my god i still think that wii u should not have been as hated as it as it was continuous research and adaptability the aspect of balancing multiple roles can also be demanding as late night hosts are not just comedians the kind of person to close a door with his hips what does that even mean and they are also producers <laughs> writers and often perform nah, he had obama on his show Performers in various sketches and segments. Coming up with fresh and original content night after night can be creatively exhausting, as hosts must continually innovate to keep their shows interesting. Meanwhile, late night shows are often live or recorded in front of a live audience. This leaves little room for mistakes, and hosts must be prepared to handle unexpected situations. Therefore, late night hosts are very much reliant on their staff to help with research, writing jokes and sketches, mm. making sure there are as little errors as possible. These writers and employees are Jimmy's lifeline. There is no show without them, and he made a crucial error on May 1st, 2023. Uh, I wouldn't have a show if it wasn't for my writers, and I support them all the way. They gotta have a fair contract, and they got a lot of stuff to iron. Bro, it's your f***ing show. What do you mean they have to have a fair contract? Sign the contract! Give them a better contract! It's his show! I mean, maybe he doesn't manage it, I guess. Maybe he doesn't manage the contracts that the, the, the writers get. Is bro stupid? <laughs> he runs it. You know what? I don't know anything about how the contracts work, so let me stop. Iron out, and uh, hopefully they get it done. If there is a strike, do you go dark? If there's a strike, uh, yeah, I think we, we will, yeah. I think we'll go, we'll go dark. Whatever I can do to support uh, the guild, uh, I am actually in the writer's guild as well, so. And I'm assuming he probably didn't. That's why I said I think, bro. I be doing that all the time, and I have to say I think I'm going to do this or that, just so it's not guaranteed and people get mad. Uh, yeah, I couldn't do the show without them, and I support so my whole staff. Although Jimmy says he will support his writers no matter what, his staff says otherwise. As one of his employees took to Twitter to write, he wasn't even at the meeting this morning to tell us we won't get paid after this week. Jimmy Fallon, please support your staff. Had fun bowling <clears> with you last week, but a party won't pay my rent. Damn. I'm sure many of you have heard about the five-month-long writer's strike in Hollywood that right. just ended, and the reason for the strike is quite simple. The Writers Guild of America is the joint efforts of two different American labor unions representing thousands of writers in film, television, radio, and online media. Writers are the backbone of Jimmy Fallon and all of Hollywood's content. Without them, there are no jokes, no scripts, no stories, nothing. Yet somehow, they are the least compensated, with most of them earning below the poverty line in salary. Writers make a bulk of their- Below the po- that's cap, there's no way. Below the poverty line? I mean, they do live in LA and stuff a lot of times. Like, they live in Cali. They live in the worst, like the most expensive places you could ever live. So even for them, like let's say they make like 60K a year, bro. They probably can't even afford like their apartment or something. Yeah, what if every, I'm really thinking of it. What if every like mod from every Twitch stream came together and they just had like a strike. They had a strike and they, they had their signs up and they were like, have the streamers pay us. Have the streamers pay. <laughs> oh, that would actually be really funny. That'd actually be really funny. Their yeah. earnings through residuals, which is a Mod percentage purge, that gets paid out to them every strike. time a movie or show is streamed or syndicated in the future. But Hollywood executives restructured the industry during the streaming era so these writers get basically nothing after the content is uploaded. And the wow. studios are profiting tens of billions while the people who are actually creating the ideas from scratch are on food stamps. So Jimmy saying he supports his staff no matter what but not increasing their salaries to a livable wage had them pretty pissed off, which led to a Rolling Stone article that contacted over 50 Tonight Show employees revealing what Jimmy is really like behind the- Oh, it's up, it's up, it's up, it's up. 50 people? I know this man shit himself when he saw that. Every single bad person that has ever worked for him was contacted. Every single person. <laughs> GG's. God, I wouldn't even want dirt. I like that's get imagine getting the 50 50 people that hate you, 50 of your worst enemies combined together in a single article for them to cook some crazy terrible shit that you've done. 
scenes. Although many praised Fallon for his immense talent and comedic gifts, nobody spoke on record or had positive things to say about working on The Tonight Show. Interestingly enough, three employees who originally worked on Late Night claim mm. a dramatic and ugly shift in working environment occurred once they transitioned to The Tonight Show. People mm. that worked under them felt this pressure that if you made one mistake, you were gone and would be easily replaced. From 2014 to 2022, there were nine different showrunners. This constant change in leadership gradually created a chaotic atmosphere among staffers who expressed their loss in faith in senior leadership. Nobody told Jimmy no. Everybody walked on eggshells, especially showrunners. Another former employee says, you never know what Jimmy you were going to get and when he was going to throw a hissy fit. They described Jimmy's temperament, mood, and treatment of staffers as erratic. They suggested Jimmy Fallon was unpredictable, having witnessed him snap at crew members over the smallest things. They also claimed Fallon occasionally- Oh damn, wait, maybe I am like Jimmy Fallon. Cause I've definitely snapped at people in this chat for minor things. <laughs> Yo, maybe I really am him other colleagues and crew ban. members. Okay. It was like, if so Jimmy's nicer, in a bad nicer. mood, everyone's I'm, day I'm is fucked. When something was wrong, we all knew how to behave afterwards, mm. which was just sort of avoid eye contact and don't make another mistake. The article- Okay, for me, if I'm having a bad day, I just avoid people. That's what I do. I don't know. I mean, then again, he has to work every day, so. Then dives into Jimmy's or SNL skit in 2000, day. where he did an impression of we Chris Rock you? while doing blackface. Jimmy apologized for this skit that- Wait, 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 wait. What did he say? I didn't hear that. Don't make another mistake. The article then dives into Jimmy's SNL skit in 2000, where he did mm. an impression of Chris Rock while doing blackface. Jimmy apologized for this skit that oh, resurfaced wow. in 2020, and the article followed up this information with an employee alleging that the staff tried to sweep this controversy under the rug. A black employee claims that showrunner Granite Benderman kept asking them, what is going on with your hair? Trying to paint the picture of a racist environment behind the scenes at The Tonight Show. Employees claim mm. that they experienced- Racist? I mean, okay, if they're just asking what's going on with your hair, that could be anything. You could just have up hair, but I don't know. Deteriorating health effects due to the environment, hair thinning, extreme weight loss. Mentally, I was in the lowest place of my life. I didn't want to live anymore. One longtime employee says they never reported their issues to HR because early on in their tenure at the show, they saw colleagues of theirs attempt to speak to human resources representatives and subsequently got fired from the show. They don't mm. protect us, the former staffer wow. says. They don't do anything for us. Many of you watching have probably worked in a toxic environment and have experienced similar ramifications as these employees alleged. So you can easily- Well, actually I can speak on this. So my work environment, me as actually the manager and boss of NFG and all the mods, uh, we have a positive, amazing, nice work environment over here. Uh, you know, it's really great, positive. We all, we're like a family, if anything. We're like a family. Uh, we sit together every single week and we go through everything together, all of our problems. I love helping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Please help me. Okay, stop, stop. See this being a reality for Jimmy's show. Others speculated that this is nothing more than a hit piece. Many think that Jimmy's short making temper, up these erratic behavior, and need for nothing less than perfection is standard for someone putting on a show for millions and millions of people. They think most of the worst allegations are against the showrunners, and Jimmy has to take the blame since he is the boss. Most mm. people wonder why someone wouldn't just get a new job if it was so bad. Then again, Jimmy did come from SNL, which was one of the most high-stress work environments that led to multiple employees suffering from substance abuse issues. So huh? it's not that hard to believe that he could- I feel like that would be fun. You're around like some of the most famous comedians? Bro, it's just the, enter the entertainment industry is just- I promise you, out of all things, I'll never venture into this industry. Could have created a similar environment thinking it's just show business. However, after Rolling Stone published the article, Fallon apologized to staff members in a Zoom call. It's embarrassing and I feel so bad, Fallon said, according to two people who were on the call. Sorry if I embarrassed you and your family and friends. I feel so bad, I can't even tell you. We don't have the full apology, so we don't know if Jimmy is accepting blame for all of these allegations, for just a few, mm. or if he is just following the command of his PR team to avoid the same outcome as Ellen. I mean, he definitely, I mean, I'm gonna say the latter. What's the latter mean? I don't know, whatever he said after, like, it's his PR team, obviously. Duh. Like the video, that's a good video. Uh, yeah. You also, in conclusion, um, I don't know, there's no, there's no conclusion. There's no conclusion. Ugh!